Hi, I'm Randy Wolken, President and CEO of MACNE, the Manufacturers Association, and President and CEO of Manufacturers Alliance of New York State. This is my Tuesday, May 12th, COVID-19 update. The governor's press briefing today took place at Binghamton University in the pharmacy school in Johnson City. He indicated the total number of hospitalizations and intubations is down again. The number of new cases also continues to decrease to levels last seen when the pause order was actually enacted. That's all good news for New York State. There were a total of 195 COVID-19 related deaths on May 11th. Of those, 142 were hospital deaths, 53 in nursing homes. A total of 21,845 New Yorkers have died due to COVID-19. There are now 100 cases being tracked of COVID-related illnesses in children with symptoms similar to Kawasaki disease. The state has had three suspected deaths in children due to these emerging complications, and the governor and, and the entire state is tracking this phenomenon. The state has published a detailed plan called New York Forward for Reopening. You can find it on the the governor's website uh, for New York State. You can find links also on our website where you can read the plan. It's all about reopening businesses by regions in phases starting as early as Friday, May 15th. You will also see which regions now qualify due to the seven matrix. Um, certain metrics are gonna be used and can be found on our website as well as New York State's website where you can see how New York Forward is emerging. As you may have seen or heard, I am part of Central New York's uh, monitoring effort for the reopening plan. And I uh, am involved on a daily call, which we give updates and get updates related to our reopening planning efforts. It's important that every business now prepare to reopen in the new normal and following the CDC guidelines as well as New York State's guidelines. This will take time and effort from planning and preparation. I can't urge you more strongly to start. Every manufacturer who is open will also have to recertify. That's what I'm hearing. And there should be a link on New York State's uh, website uh, to be unveiled sometime this week. I'll keep you updated when I find out more specific information. On an ongoing basis, you can see the interactive dashboard which allows you to track each region. Our membership spread amongst many regions, so you have to look for your specific economic development region to see uh, where you're at in, re in regards to that. So far, there are many regions who have met the matrix. The Southern Tier, for instance, the Finger Lakes, the North Country, and today the governor announced the Capital Region. I do expect Mohawk Valley and Central New York to both hit the thresholds uh, by Friday. If that were the case, nearly all of our member companies would be covered, and many of the Alliance member companies would be covered, with four regions still remain um, not able to open due to the health-related metrics that the governor has announced. As the governor said, when each region amongst the 10 reach the metrics, they'll be allowed to reopen in phases, and that will continue based on the data collected in each region's control room. As I mentioned, I'm on Central New York each region's control room. These are, these are a collection of local officials and regional uh, representatives who, whose job is to really gauge the public health threat levels as we begin to go back to work. Each further reopening or potential reclosing should we have setbacks Will be, be, will be determined by the health, public health metrics. You can see a full list of all the regional control rooms uh, also on our website. Previously, it's been stated that the time between the phases of the reopening plan was two weeks. In response to a reporter today, the governor said that this is an estimated timeline between moving phases. And will, will really depend on the metrics being tracked by the regional control rooms. Regions uh, will be allowed to go faster or slower than a two-week timeline, depending on the data. 
There's a series of useful slides included in the OSTROP update on our COVID-19 resources that give you a sense of what the governor's talking about when it comes to the control rooms and their metrics that are being used. The governor also talked at length about federal aid and the need for the U.S. House of Representatives and the Senate to come to an agreement on the next phase of federal aid. The governor continued to call for this for a phase four COVID-19 response, and he called for it to include federal funding for state and local programs. The state needs approximately $61 billion in federal funding, or the state will be forced to cut schools, local governments, and hospitals. He projected by 20%. He indicated that states pay the salaries of police, fire teachers, healthcare workers, but right now those are taking a substantial hit as other parts of our economy have been. Therefore, there needs to be a substantial package for states that will allow the salaries you know, and um, related expenses to continue to occur. The governor called upon the, the federal government to make substantial investments. The governor also reported and, and talked about several members of the New York congressional delegation, which will propose America's first law, which would prohibit companies from keeping federal bailouts unless they rehire the same number of employees they did before the crisis. Also, just so you know, there are New York State legislative public hearings being scheduled. Uh, as of now, Wednesday, May 13th at 10 a.m., there are several committees of both House Houses of the legislature will be conduct virtual public hearings on the federal response to the economic to the economic impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on small businesses in New York. You can see the link to that public hearing on our website, and it can be viewed both on the Assembly and the New York State Senate uh, websites. On Monday, May 18th at 10 a.m., several committees of both the houses. Of the both houses of the legislature will conduct a virtual public hearing to explore solutions to the disproportionate impact of COVID-19 on minority communities. Again, there's a public hearing notice link on our website and you can view them as indicated on our website at both for both the Assembly and the New York State Senate. There are some updated guidance to New York State Education Department. Attorney General has put out some guidance on, on, on unlawful evictions. There are no changes to Empire State Development's uh, determination of essential businesses. As we just discussed, increasingly we're working through a phased approach where all elements of our business and community will come online. Let's stay tuned for that. Again, you can find information on New York Forward on our website or on New York State's website. There are some updates to New York City um, agency suspensions and reductions. You can again find all these resources laid out very nicely on our website and we'll be adding a new feature to our website specifically around the New York Forward Plan, which increasingly is the plan to reopen our economy. It's absolutely critical we begin the process of safely reopening our community. That, and I mean in all aspects, we need to reopen our community. From what I'm reading and seeing, this is going to be a slow economic recovery. We need everybody to begin the process of making the transition. It's startlingly different than it was just two months ago. We're all gonna to have to roll over our sleeves and work hard together to get our economic house back in order. Uh, this pandemic has had a severe impact on the global, national, uh, state, and regional economies. And we're gonna to continue to feel the impact uh, for um, quite a while. Um, having said that, I also believe that we will recover. We will again grow strong and we will take some positive lessons, learnings, and understandings from this crisis, like every crisis that has hit upstate New York and New York State as a whole over the, the many decades in the past. MACNI will be here for you. MACNI will continue to provide you services as you continue to invest in your business and grow our community and serve our community. We look forward to doing that with you. As always, we'll be here for you. If you need any of us, please do reach out for us on MACNI.org or individually to staff members to include myself. Have yourself a nice evening, be calm, stay safe, and carry on.